Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me here today. My name is Martin Zahumensky, and I'm CGO at Atacama. Recently, we have announced some exciting news, our acquisition of Telstory, the data visualization platform. And today, I will walk you through Telstory, show how it works, and what's unique about it. I will also talk about the future plans with Telstory and explain the main benefits for Atacama customers. So let's jump into it. 25th of February, we announced acquisition of Telstory. Telstory is a data visualization tool. It's unique in the way how the data are presented to users. It's about something we call intelligent data stories. I'll start by walking you through uh, how Telstory was created and why it was actually created. So when you are uh, typically working with data, you usually get access to dashboards. Now, dashboards are great for getting the information, but it takes a lot of digging to extract some of the details. So I'll try to explain this on the COVID dashboard because everybody probably knows this one. It's from John Hopkins University. So now when you're looking on this dashboard, it's quite easy to get actually like high level overview. So you see like the country with the most cases, you see the global amount of the cases and some big map. Now, I'm usually asking myself about different questions. So I'm interested in things like which country has the most cases yesterday? Uh, or things like how was the virus spreading over the time? So, or for example, which country is recovering the fastest? Or new countries with the infection, so where it was not before and now it's there. So if you want to get information like this, uh, it's pretty hard actually to dig it out of this dashboard. So you can imagine that uh, you would have to do a lot of drilling inside the dashboard. Now, we are used to reading a bit differently. So most people want to get the updates they are interested in and they just want to read through them and they want to be this information fresh. Now, what is usually happening because of this is that most of the times we take the dashboards out of uh, some BI tool and we just put it in something we can read through in the normal way. So let's say PowerPoint or Word document. And now and the analyst will probably pull out this information, which is most probably interesting for you manually. Uh, and this means that basically there is a lot of copy pasting of pictures happening and that makes the report more or less static. So next time you would like to read about it and you would like to get like the news for yesterday, you would have to just ask somebody to update the report. Now, how is Telstory different and what are the stories? So Telstory tries to combine these two worlds. So it tries to combine the kind of way of reading normal information through infographics uh, with the kind of analytical uh, features which are present in the BI tools and the dashboards. And it tries to combine these two in one single tool, which is working with live data, which provides some graspable information for the reader and it pulls out the insight from the data to explain better what is actually the user looking on. So let's continue with this COVID case I was showing. So what you are actually looking on all the time, it's Telstory and it's story published from Telstory. So you have different visualization uh, possibilities in Telstory. Uh, like, for example, using components like this one where you can pull out some metrics out of the data. You can use text elements like this one, which is not very interesting yet, but where it comes to, uh, to more interesting, actually, when we start to using the animations, the zoom outs and so on. So what you can, for example, do is something we call uh, steps. So you can actually interact with the elements inside. So let's say we have this map, which was showing the worldwide situation. We can zoom for the user to Europe. And now like it's not clear what is actually happening here, but uh, you can pull out information and use this kind of explainers, we call it, inside to provide additional information for the reader. There are different ways uh, how you can use this and I'll show you throughout the demo. Uh, now this means that when the user is just scrolling down, uh, the elements are interacting, are moving, are showing the important information like how many cases was, for example, in North America. Now, that's not it. It's just not about the maps. You can use the same kind of stuff on, on charts. So imagine you will show a chart to user which would have multiple lines. So it's pretty hard to read. But when you uh, use our animations, you can, for example, start with showing the sum of confirmed cases. And then you can be adding additional series in the chart. So I can add like recovered. I can add information about the deaths. And the user see the comparison actually between those uh, those facts. 
So let's see how this works actually, and let's jump to tell story to show you this story. So this is the story, and this is the editor of the story. Uh, now these elements are called sections, so sections can be of different types. You can actually insert different elements inside. So there is a lot of visualization stuff. We have basically maps, we have charts, we have text elements, different filter button. And we also have some AI proposals which are helping you to pick out actually the proper charts for, uh, for the data set you have. So when I scroll down, for example, to this section, which I was showing before, these are the animation elements uh, I showed you. So you can add text, you can insert some metrics inside, like for example, sum of that rate, and it will actually uh, show it dynamically inside that. Now these steps are animated, you can change the visual style, you can decide to make it bigger or smaller, uh, you can decide to change the visual style. Uh, we are, we can, you can be using these bubbles or you can just use the text elements and you can say it will be white on top of it. So these are the animations. Now, let's say uh, I'd like to create a new story. So I'll try to show you end to end. So basically tell story does have two, two main modules. One is the data set management. So you can just go here and we have different ways of importing data. So either you plug your Google Drive and you can pull the data out of Google Sheets or you can just upload the data as you are used to. So let's say I'll pick up data with GitHub uh, statistics. So how people are actually committing to projects and which projects are most popular. So now the tool asynchronously takes the file, import it. You can go inside, you see some basic statistics. You can take a look on the data itself. And when you are happy with the import, you've seen that everything was done by automatically. So the platform guesses the separators and all the stuff around. You can actually choose to create a visual story. So now uh, you see the same thing as we have seen before in my story. And let's say I want to show uh, which repositories do have uh, most uh, commits. So this is our field speaker. So here you see the fields from the data set. And let's say I'll want to see the commits so I can easily search through this. And I can pick commits and you can choose uh, if you want to aggregate the data or you want to just commit the data. So now we see that the data are not sorted properly. So we can go here to the filter section. We can say order by commits descending and now we have basically the most popular repository. So that's how simple it is actually to create something. So uh, going back to my original story, uh, so this is the overview of the story. So going back to mine, uh, so we can do some some more cool stuff actually in tell story. So it's not just about uh, the animation I have been showing, but it's also about the visual components we have. So if I go back, we can use something we call time the machine. Time machine allows you to animate the data over the time. So we can decide, for example, this is showing how the COVID was actually spreading throughout the world and which countries had most cases over the time. Now you can use this time machine to, to animate charts, but you can also choose the time machine to animate some of the maps we are offering. So for example, this is showing the spread uh, geographically. So you see how it was spreading around the world and which countries were growing most. So kind of a similar view as I've seen before, just different visualization style. Now you can also be using animated GIFs uh, to provide some more coolness to your stories if you'd like to. Uh, one of the interesting stuff is also that you can animate these steps in between, but you can also drill through the data. So let's say we have this chart showing overview over, over the continent. So how many cases is in Europe versus North America. And now we want to, let user drill down to see this uh, breakdown by countries. So you can just easily basically add a new step and you will see the breakdown by the countries. So uh, I'll show you how is this actually done. So if you will go here, you can just basically say, I want to create a new step and you go to the chart and you can just decide basically to remap uh, this field to anything, uh, anything you like. So we can use either continent, or we can use uh, country as we had before. Now let's say we want to uh, we want to give additional information to users. So if you have chart like this one, which is comparing the development over the first hundred days in the countries, uh, we have chosen few of the countries. But you see, like like one of the countries, like US, is basically making it unreadable because all the other ones uh, do have small number. 
So what you can again easily do is that you can just copy this. So what I also did here was that uh, I use some of the options we have, uh, like this one, switch to linear. So basically when you switch to logarithmic, you have much better overview. But if you'd like to keep this viewpoint and you just want to hide US to provide more information, you see how it drastically changed for the user and the readability of the chart. So basically the user can just click through the animations and you can walk him through, uh, through this again. So this is another, another feature we have. You can also be using these explainers, uh, which we call uh, formulas or hero shapes. So this hero shape is actually pulling out additional information out of the data. And we call this insights. So these insights are automatically generated. There are different types of insights actually present, which you can use. So let me go back here. And now you can decide to, to just like uh, create new explainer like this bubble. I can decide that I want it appear as a bubble of this color. And what you can do is you can insert one of the facts which was generated by the engine. So this is the one which is basically picking up the country with the highest amount of cases uh, in Europe. So you can just insert in and that's done. And user can basically uh, get some additional information on top of the chart you have seen. You can also decide to make it as a separate slide. So it's not overlaying with this slide before. You can just put it on top of it if you want to do it like this, for example. So that was about the, the key features we have. Uh, we have a lot of different charts. Some of them are unique. Uh, you can also use things like tables. Uh, you can use these hero shapes, which I've been showing for, for the bubbles uh, and many more. Now, once you have the story done, uh, you probably want to share it with users. Now, there are different possibilities how we can actually share this with the users. So the first one is through link. So we can just click share and copy this link. And the story will essentially appear to user like this. So he can just scroll through and just read the story as, as we have been reading it through now. Now, the second option is sharing through embedding to HTML. So you can actually decide to embed one of these elements you have through iframe to um, any custom HTML page. So this is a HTML page where we just embedded this iframe I have been showing to you. So that's how it looks. And basically, you can put it to any article in WordPress or wherever it's interesting for you. Now, the last one, but pretty cool one, is the recording of the video. So you can actually click on this button record. And what it will do, it will open our recorder. Uh, you can choose how fast you want to uh, run the recording. You can click record. And essentially, what it will do is it will record video like this, which you can easily share on social network, Instagram, Slack, or wherever and people can just watch it uh, instead of, of scrolling through it. So this was tell story in glance. Now, switching back to roadmap and our future plans. So for us, it's very important to give additional benefits to, to Atacama users, but we will be offering uh, uh, tell story also as a standalone tool. So we will be offering this as uh, as a multi-tenant version of the Telstory, which you will be able to access on telstory.cloud. This will be coming later on in April, and it will have a freemium plan, which uh, you will be able to use. There will be a limitation on the number of stories and the size of the data you can upload inside the tool. But if you want to get more, uh, you can still ask ourselves. They'll definitely figure out some, uh, some plan for you, how you can use this even for bigger data sets. So this will be the first multi-tenant kind of version of the tool. Now, for us, it's important to provide more benefits for Atacama users. And uh, there are like several different areas which we will be covering throughout the year. So the first one which will be coming, it's uh, data stories for DQM, which I'll show you in a minute. And there will be additional areas like advanced dashboards for master data management hub, um, data stewardship reports, so you can uh, create reports on top of the data catalog explaining which data assets are used most, which are not used, uh, and, and so on. And one of the cool stuff will be providing deeper context in catalog. What we mean by this is that Atacama One is already pretty powerful. Uh, so when you go to catalog item, you can preview the data, you can see data profile, you can see data quality. Now with Telstory, you will be able to create like business point of view on the data. So the data steward who is, or, or the, the subject domain knowledge expert who knows the data pretty well, can instead of just providing information like this is how the data looks, this is how many email addresses we have empty in our marketing data, 
we'll be able to create a business report, for example, saying like how many campaigns we sent, uh, how many of the email addresses are deliverable, how many of them bounced, uh, and so on. So basically giving a deeper insight inside the data for the users. And now these will be possible to store back in the catalog. So users can basically pull out this information the same way as they pull out the other information from Atacama 1. Now the first integration will happen with Atacama 1 uh, in Q3 2021. So later on this year, it will only be available in FAS. So our platform as a service Atacama Cloud offering. And the first one will be what I already mentioned. So we have uh, this customer data quality report. So you can check the other demo, which is, uh, which is uh, running in parallel. And this essentially allows you to uh, define different data quality rules on top of the data sets, and then you can uh, basically see the development over the time. Now, when it comes to some custom reports, so for example, somebody would like to, I don't know, create a report for a specific system or filtering only for specific rules, uh, you will be able to use uh, tell story. So you will see the data quality monitoring as data source, and you will be able to create a new advanced data quality monitoring projects. So to give you some sneak peek how it can look like, so what, what it will be possible, there will be two things you can do. So I haven't so far shown, but we also have the dashboarding capabilities. So it's not only about stories, but you can also create dashboards. So let's say I want to uh, have a report on top of my data quality monitoring project for customer data, where I want to filter by type of the data, corporate or customer details. So I can use uh, the filter elements here. And uh, all the charts are basically cross filtering through this. So let's say I only want to say invalid report uh, record. So here you basically then see uh, which of the data uh, or which of the validation rules are causing how many issues uh, and invalid records uh, for the customer customer data. You can again use different visualization things like uh, like uh, grids, uh, charts, uh, more or less everything what you've been able to to use in uh, in the uh, stories. So basically all of those. Now, uh, the same way as we did before, you can share this with users. It just renders as a as a story which you can click, click through and drill through. Now, you will be able also to create stories. Uh, so the same way as we uh, did the story for the GitHub data, uh, you can create a stories on top of uh, on top of data quality projects. So you can, for example, show the data quality rules you have and see how they are impacting the quality. So I can basically see how many of the records are valid, invalid. Uh, you can create charts uh, with development over the time and basically whatever is inside the data. So this is what will be coming in Q3 and it will be integrated directly in Atacama 1. We will keep improving uh, also the basic functionality. So it's not just about the integration, but we will be also working on uh, different functionalities inside the tell story itself. So we will be improving the sharing of stories, which I mentioned. So there will be different ways sharing with the user in your organization, sharing password protected. We will uh, uh, be adding even more cool visualizations and unique visualizations. So we have a team working on a new visual components. And we will be uh, launching the Insights Engine very soon. The Insights Engine will be extended over the time to cover more and more uh, types of insights. So we will be starting with insights, which are comparing period to period. So you can easily uh, say, like, I want to be notified when the average for last day uh, is higher than the average over the last 14 days. We will also have a different types uh, of, of these insights, and you will be able to basically publish this to Slack or email or use section like this, which we call minute by minute updates, where you will have like the reader's digest with the latest happening in your story. So you can just take a look on it and not read the whole story. And many other small improvements like having history, uh, undo, redo inside the stories, improving mobile layout. So all of those are coming. So this was the story in glance. If you are interested, we will notify you once we once we launch it. So in a couple of weeks, you will get an email and you can join our community story cloud to uh, discuss uh, request uh, features, improvements and so on. So I hope you liked it and uh, we hope it will really change the way how people in organizations can leverage the data in the data catalog and work with the quality data. 
So thank you very much again. And uh, if you like the story, you can give it a spoke. We will publish the story after the event. So back to Toronto and to Afshin. Bye-bye.